Good morning to all of you that are joining us on Facebook Live. Uh, this is the virtual worship service of the Second Macedonia Baptist Church located in the Logan section of Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love and sisterly affection. My name is Harold Jolly and I have the distinct pleasure and the humble privilege to serve as the senior pastor of those who God has entrusted me with. Um, we're so grateful that you have chosen to join us on today in this month of July. We're so grateful for you to be with us. Um, there, we know that there's plenty of other sites that you could have visited on this morning, but we're grateful that you're here with us at the Second Macedonia Baptist Church. Uh, for those that are coming on Facebook Live, would you please host a watch party uh, in order for us to expand our reach? Again, would you please host a watch party in order for us to be able to expand our reach to those who need to hear the gospel, the good news of Jesus the Christ. So if at any time that you are not able to be with us on a Sunday morning, I do want you to know that we do replay this same message. You can visit our YouTube channel at uh, Second Macedonia Baptist Church. Again, just go to YouTube, type in Second Macedonia Baptist Church, and you will be able to see all the past sermons that we have been uh, bringing forth during this time of pandemic. Uh, I'm not going to waste much time on this morning. I'm excited about what God has deposited into me on this week. Would you open up your Bibles to the book of Job? Again, open up your Bibles to the book of Job, chapter number four. Five. Again, the book of Job chapter number five. I'm going to be reading from the New Revised Standard Version on this morning. As always, I'm grateful to have my Amen Corner in the house with me. There are many preachers that um, aren't able or they're not comfortable to be able to preach in a room by themselves. I'm not one of those preachers. Just give me a microphone um, and the word and I will declare what the word says. But God has also blessed me uh, to be uh, in the presence of my lovely wife and my wonderful daughters and even my mother's here on this morning. So we're grateful for them. That's my amen corner on this morning. But again, even if they were not here, I would still do what God has asked me to do. The book of Job chapter number five, beginning at verse number one. Um, to all of you that are putting something in the chat on Facebook live, unfortunately, I'm not able to see it, but I do want to acknowledge you. And I just want to say, may God continue to bless you and keep you during this time. The book of Job chapter 5, New Revised Standard Version. I'm just going to read one verse. Uh, Call now. Is there anyone who will answer you? To which of the holy ones will you turn? Again, that verse is call now. Is there anyone who will answer you? To which one of the holy ones will you turn? Let us look unto the Lord. Father, we're grateful for this opportunity to come before your presence with thanksgiving and an open heart to be able to receive what you have deposited into this, your man servant. We pray now, dear Lord, that you would just bind up every distraction right now in the name of Jesus. If there's anything that's trying to pull our attention away from you, uh, we cast it out in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we pray that you would just allow us to, to focus in on what your word wants to say to us on today, even uh, during this time of life where things are chaotic, where things are disruptive. Uh, we pray that you would just bring about a sense of peace, understanding, and clarity. Take now this broken vessel and hold me in the hollows of your hand. Use me to preach and teach uh, thy word to thy people like never before. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by thy power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. In the name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus, who art the Christ, let all of God's children say amen. Again, for those that are on Facebook Live, would you please host a watch party for us? For us to be able to extend our reach uh, for those that might want to hear the word of God. This is the virtual worship of the Second Macedonia Baptist Church. If you would allow me to place a subject here for us to be able to ground our thoughts on today. Uh, our subject is there's nobody else that I can call on. Let me say that again. There is nobody else that I can call on. Uh, during the preparation during this past week. I came across an article uh, that was titled A Divine Disruption, which was authored uh, by a pastor named Bob. 
and from, he was from the Community Fellowship Church. This article was centered around the thought of disruptions, the same series that we have been dealing with over the past few weeks. The same topic that we have been wrestling with, trying to gain a better understanding of what we need to do during this time of global pandemic. Pastor Bob described the following and I quote, when times are good, when our world is at peace and nothing is threatening our well-being, it is easy to say I'm trusting in God. When all our needs are met and God is providing as we think he should, it is easy to say my hope is in him. But when things aren't going well, when our world isn't at peace and something is threatening our well-being, it can become difficult for us to say I'm trusting in God and my hope is in him. I have to admit, there was a time this week when I uh, became fearful and overwhelmed by the economic threat of the COVID-19 pandemic. It was an awful feeling and I needed to run to my father's throne room. I asked God to show me how I was becoming overwhelmed and what I needed to do to maintain my hope and confidence in him, end quote. Again, this was a short passage from a letter uh, that was written by a pastor named Bob of the Community Fellowship Church. There were a few things that really stood out uh, from this article uh, that I would like to highlight on this morning. But for the sake of time, I just want to highlight one thing that really stood out the most to me that Pastor Bob decided to pin when he was feeling overwhelmed. He made the intentional choice uh, to go to God. And I must ask on today, my dear brothers and sisters, uh, who uh, we have, who do we have to go to? Uh, when life is disrupted, when we feel overwhelmed. And I believe the answer to that question I just posed can be found in our text on today. Uh, for those that have been with us for the past few weeks, uh, we have been walking through the book of Job. Uh, as we have been trying to gain a better understanding of how to handle life when it becomes disrupted. And I know that I do not have to remind you those who are watching and listening that yes, our lives have been disrupted over the past few months because of the global pandemics that have now surfaced. Yes, we're dealing with a health pandemic, but yes, we are also dealing with a racial pandemic that really has been going on for a number of years. And this is just one in a way, but I'm sure that if we were to reflect back over our lives, we can identify various times when our lives were disrupted and we had to make the choice about who we were going to call on. The question from this series of sermons continues to ask, how do we handle life once it has been disrupted? Can I ask that? Can I say that again? How do we handle life once it has been disrupted? Do we throw in the towel and just give up? Do we run and hide or do we stay in the fight? And as I asked before, who do we run to when life is disrupted? Drawing our attention to the writing uh, and to provide a brief recap regarding Job and how life, uh, how his life had been disrupted. Just one reminder that Job had it all. Uh, he had what many desires in life, especially in times of today. He had wealth, uh, he had health, he had family, he had a relationship with God. When you read chapter one, we will see how all of what Job had was taken away because Satan was trying to make a point to God that the creation that God had created would turn their backs on him when life gets too much to bear. And as always, I must ask this question, how do we handle life during the moments of despair? Uh, even if we are to reflect over the past few months, how have you turned your back on God? Or have you trusted and continue to trust that he will bring us out? When we get to chapter two, we'll see how the health of Job was attacked. Job's wife tried to get Job to turn his back on God. And even though his health was attacked, Job, let me say that again, Job never gave up on God. What Job did was curse the day he was born, but he never gave up on God. 
And I would like to encourage somebody on today. Don't you dare give up on God. I don't care how rough life becomes. I don't care how much weight is being placed down on your shoulders. I don't care what you are going through. There's something that we as Christians, that we as believers, that we as disciples, that we as the learners of Jesus Christ should never do. And that's to give up on God. I don't care what you are facing. Never give up on God. God is the answer. And pressing forward in our recap, Job's friend, Eliphaz, uh, questioned Job and his faith. We talked about on last week. Uh, when you get some time this week, please go back and read chapters one through four in the book of Job. Can I say that again? When you get some time this week, go back and read chapters one through four in the book of Job. And secondly, I would invite you to join our YouTube channel. That way, you'll be able to see all the past sermons that we have been preaching during this time of virtually coming to you. Would you subscribe, subscribe to that channel? That way, every time a new sermon is uploaded, it will be brought right to your doorstep. Uh, I have been preaching a series of sermons and disruptions, uh, and I hope that these sermons will be able to bless your life. As we walk through this writing, we took note to a discussion that Job had with one of his three friends that came to support him and console him. Uh, Job's friend Eliphaz, the one who appears first uh, here in our text, will take note uh, how there was some verbal discourse that was going on between him and his friend Eliphaz. Uh, Eliphaz, uh, again, questioned Job's faith. Eliphaz asked Job if he was going to give up even though he encouraged others to stay on the course when life got rough. And I believe I tried to encourage somebody on last week uh, that we have to stand on what we believe. We can't just tell somebody else not to give up and not follow our own advice. If the word of God is inside of us and if God has already instructed us on, on what to do when life gets too much to bear, we need to stand on the word of God. Somebody high five yourself or if you're next to somebody, high five your neighbor and just encourage them to stand on the word of God. As I continue reading the dialogue between Job and Eliphaz, I noticed that Eliphaz asked Job two questions uh, as we begin to look at this fifth chapter in verse number one. Uh, I believe that these two questions even needs to be answered in times of today. These two questions I would contend needs to be answered by someone that's watching or listening. We'll find it again in chapter five, verse number one in the book of Job. Eliphaz states, uh, call now. Is there anyone who will answer you to which of the holy ones will you turn? Again, the questions that is being posed by Eliphaz to Job is questions. Uh, uh, who is it that Job will call on uh, that will answer him? Eliphaz is trying to see if Job will even call on a mediator that will intercede on his behalf. He says, is there anyone that will answer you? And beloved, is there someone that you know of that you can call on uh, that you know will answer you when your life becomes disrupted, when our health goes from being good to now being at the doorstep of death, when our economic means goes from being stable to now uh, having to ask somebody just for a few dollars, when our family situations goes from being stable and intact to now being in chaos, uh, who can you call on? When our mental health is ready and steady, uh, but when events in life causes us to be unstable mentally, who can we call on? Who can we call on when life gets to be too much to bear? And I was confused as I read Eliphaz's questions because he knew who Job served and worshiped. He knew who Job prayed to, yet he asked, is there anyone who will answer you? And and as I pondered on the questions that was posed to Job by his friend, I began to wonder why these questions and what Job's response was going to be. Since Eliphaz knew who Job worshipped, did he expect Job to call on someone else? Did he expect Job to call on an angel or to another man-made idol? The relationship that Job had with God was already evident in the text. There was no one else that Job was willing to call on. So 
why did Eliphaz ask these questions? Uh, did Eliphaz think that Job was now going to call on the spirit that was trying to claim to be more powerful than the God that he already served? It just did not make sense to me. From chapter one, even up to this point in the text, uh, Job had been faithful regarding who he submitted his life to. Job had been faithful to the one who he declared would be able to get him out of this situation. Job never once turned his back on God. And I must ask this question, when life gets to be too much to bear in life, uh, when we think that we're going to give up and life is coming to the end, how confident uh, uh, or how much faith do we have in the God that we claim to serve? And I believe from the depths of my soul that the God that we serve desires for us uh, that have made the intentional choice to walk with him, to talk with him, that we must be faithful and loyal to the end. Have you ever tried to convince yourself that God will not show up or do anything in our situation? Or did you keep the faith when life was getting too much to bear? Did you think that God neglected you or did you just wait and mark time and waited for God to show up? Uh, there are times when our minds oftentimes try to convince us otherwise. Can I help somebody on today? No matter how bad a situation may seem to be, trust God to the end. Looking back at our text, uh, the more I read the question in chapter number five, verse number one, uh, the more I began to wonder if Eliphaz was under the impression that Job did not have anyone to turn to. It seems as if the questions being posed uh, carried a tone of sarcasm. To which one of the holy ones will you turn? For those that were with us last week, uh, who had the chance to view last week's sermon, I did suggest that uh, though Satan no longer being present in our text, uh, this might have been uh, his way of still staying present by using the words in the presence of Job's friends. Remember, Satan wanted someone to turn their back on God. God suggested Job, and then the attacks began. When Job's friends uh, showed up uh, to be with him, I believe that they tried to feel him out to see what he was going to do. And here it is, instead of Job's friends from the onset telling Job to go to God, he adds more salt uh, to his wound. And isn't it worse uh, when somebody who shows up who claims to be your friend when you're already down and out will throw more salt in your womb instead of helping you to get up? We'll see it in verses 2 through 7 of chapter 5. Eliphaz referred to the emotions that he saw Job display. He mentioned or he made mention of how uh, this disruption in life of Job came out of nowhere. He talked about his children being killed. He made mention about how people can just lose everything just as Job did. He spoke about how humans are born into trouble. He alludes to how human nature brings about the trouble that we experience and if I can just pause right here just for a few minutes. Yes, uh, our nature, our flesh can lead us into trouble. Can I get a witness on today? It's like him stating that all the trouble that we face in life is all because of us. Uh, uh, what have we done that our flesh has led us into? What has our flesh caused us to do? Has our flesh caused us to offend somebody? Has our flesh lead us down paths uh, that cause us to question why we are alive? Our flesh can persuade us to do all kinds of crazy things. And this is why uh, we must be careful, my dear brothers and sisters, regarding who is in control? Is our flesh more powerful than the Holy Spirit that resides within us? Or is the Holy Spirit that resides in us more powerful than the flesh that we are wrapped in? I have to remind you, uh, this is why I uh, try to encourage people at the end of every service, uh, that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. It's our flesh that we wrestle with every day. Every time God gives us an opportunity to wake up 
up and be on this side of the land of the living. There will indeed be some type of battle that we will have to wrestle with, but we have to submit ourselves to the spirit of God that's in us. When the spirit of God is able to rise up and take power over our flesh, God will be able to use us more effectively. God will be able to lead us to where he desires for us to be. Don't ever let your flesh become more powerful than the spirit of God that's inside of us because that's when we'll get in trouble. We have to remind ourselves uh, that we got someone inside of us that has all power, that has all intentions for us uh, to be great in the sight of God. Even in Romans chapter eight and verse number nine, it reminds us, uh, but your sinful nature does not control you. The spirit of God lives in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to Christ. And this is why it's important to live by the spirit. When we live by the spirit, we are availing ourselves to allow the spirit to lead us to where God desires for us to be. But referencing back to our text, the more I read the words of Eliphaz, uh, I questioned what type of friend he really was. I questioned what type of friend would show up to throw more salt in the womb of someone that was already down. Has anyone who is watching or listening ever found themselves, uh, as I stated before, in the same situation as Job, uh, somebody who classified themselves as a friend uh, to come into your, to, into your life uh, and they uh, tried to hold you down instead of trying to build you back up when life was already bad enough how someone who called themselves uh, your friend would bring a sense of darkness instead of allowing the light to shine. Uh, they'll bring up everything that we have done. They'll bring up all the things from our past. They'll uh, cast their views on the situations, thinking that they're right and they don't know anything about what we're going through. All they want to do is talk about the bad stuff and the things that we face in life. And I don't know about you, but I don't need anyone like that. Somebody who called themselves my friend to drag me down and in the lower that I'm already am. And as I continued reading the text, uh, I took note to the shift in the tone in the words of Eliphaz. Uh, it is like he asked two questions in verse number one. Then he went into a rant in verses two through seven. And then in verse number eight, he reveals to Job who he would go to if he was in Job's situation. Eliphaz states, uh, as for me, I would seek God and to God, I would commit my cause. And as I looked at what Eliphaz was saying, I wondered if he noticed is something about Job that we were not able to see in the text. Did he sense uh, that Job needed to be reminded of why he should go to God? Was Job doing something that alluded to the point that he felt the need to remind Job who he should go to? Not only does Eliphaz inform Job who he would go to to commit his cause, uh, but he then informs Job why he would commit his cause to God. We'll see it in verses 9 through 17. He told Job, why he would go to God. And if I could pause right here to help somebody on today, I know that the majority of people that are watching and listening on today, I know that you believe in God. But today I felt the need to remind somebody that uh, even though we believe in God, there are times where we still struggle and we still wrestle thinking that God has abandoned us and God has given up to us. But can I remind you that we don't serve that type of God? We serve a God that keeps us in the palm of his hands. We serve a God that wants to draw us closer to him whenever we are going through. We serve a God that wants to pull us out of darkness and let his marvelous light shine. And this is what Eliphaz does in the text. He lists all the things that God can do. And can I just uh, ask somebody who is watching or listening on today, uh, do you know what God is able to do? Does he have a track record of doing something? in your life uh, that you can just begin to get happy about and testify about how God has done something in your life uh, that you just can't keep it to yourself. Uh, I believe that there are times where we got to remind ourselves what God is due. Is there anybody out there that can give a testimony about what God has done and what God is able to you to do? Do you know that he's able to bring comfort during the time of chaos? Uh, do you know that he's able to bring healing to the times when we 
are sick? Do you know that he's able to bring hope to those who are hopeless? Do you know that he's able to deliver those who are oppressed? Do you know that he's able to let his marvelous light shine whenever the clouds of darkness are hovering over our lives? Do you know that he's able to bring joy to those who are depressed? Do you know that he's able to share his love to those who feel unloved? And I believe that Isaiah says it best. Seek the Lord while he can be found. Call on him and he will be near to you. Is there anybody out there that can answer the question for yourself that as we are going through this pandemic, we don't have to ask nobody who we need to go to because we know it for ourselves. We can go to God. All we have to do is call on his name and he promised to answer us and incline his ear to us. Is there anybody out there that can just give God some praise for showing up when you call on him, for being an every present help in the time of need. Is there anybody out there that can just tell somebody that you don't have to go to any man-made gods. All you have to do is to go to God our Father who is in heaven and he will show up. Don't be confused. Don't be confounded. Know that God is there even when you're going through. And when you think you're able to give up, you don't need any mediators because there's one mediator that suits our case and his name is Jesus the Christ. And I want to know on today, is there somebody out there that knows uh, that you can go to Jesus? Is there somebody out there that knows that you can call on Jesus and he will show up? And if there's somebody there that does not know Jesus for themselves, who does not know Jesus for the pardoning of your sins, who does not have Jesus as their own personal mediator, you today can establish your own relationship with him. All you have to do is call on his name. The Bible tells us in the writing of Romans that if we confess with our mouth and believe in our hearts that Jesus Christ died and God raised him up from the dead, the Bible says that you shall be saved. What does that mean? Being saved means that you're being raised rescued from the disruptive and destructive life that you're going through. And God is now going to place you in a place where he's going to be able to minister to you, to equip you, to build you up and to lead you now to be a vessel for him. And if there's somebody out there that does not have their own personal relationship with God, I extend this invitation to you, my dear brother. I extend this invitation to you, my dear sister, that if you do not know the Lord yourself for the pardoning of your sins. This is your opportunity. There's a reason why you're here with us virtually. There's a reason why God saw fit to allow you to stay here during our virtual worship. It's so he can get your attention and draw you to be close to him. And if there's somebody out there that knows they need to be in relationship with the Lord, come on, put it in the text on today. Put it in the chat on today and say it's me and we'll have somebody reach out to you or you can go to our website www.smbapt.org. Again, that's www.sm, as in Macedonia, bapt.org. You'll find a link where you can fill a digital discipleship card. It'll go to our front office, and then one of our deacons will reach out to you and have a more personal conversation to you. If you're out there, my dear brothers and sisters, I want you to know that you don't have to be in this journey by yourself. As your life is being disrupted, there's someone that you can call on. But in a relationship, you got to be all in, just like God is all in. So here's your opportunity. Come to Jesus just as you are. And if there's somebody out there that asks the Lord to come into your life, but for some reason you don't have a church home, you don't have a place where you can be rooted and planted, you don't have a place where you can be covered by an under shepherd that will love you past all your faults and not worried about what you have done in the past, I want you to know that Second Macedonia is not a perfect church, uh, but we are a people that's trying to serve a perfect God. Uh, we're waiting for you, we're extending our arms to you, no matter where you are in the country, uh, we are expanding our we're inviting you to join the membership of the Second Macedonia Baptist Church. All you have to do is put in the chat, say it's me, I want to join Second Macedonia, and then we'll have somebody reach out to you. Or again, you can go to our website and you can fill out the digital discipleship card and we'll have somebody reach out to you to let you know what you need to do to be a part of this local branch of Zion. I pray that this message has blessed you as always, and some pastors are always scared to do this, but I'm not scared. 
prepared. I want to encourage you not to miss out on your blessings. God instructs us uh, to bring our tithes and offerings into the storehouse. And even though we're not able to be in the physical building of the Second Macedonia Baptist Church at 1301 West Ruscombe Street, you can still give. All you have to do is go to our website and we have a secure link where you're able to give. All you have to do is input some information and it will uh, it will instruct you on how to give to the Second Macedonia Baptist Church. I do this because we want to continue doing ministry. We want to continue doing the work that God has commissioned us to do. And for those that know uh, what, what ministry costs, uh, ministry does cost. So we need your support. We need your financial help. Uh, we invite you to be partners with us uh, as we continue to do the work that God has called us to do. Again, I pray that you have been blessed. If you're not, if you're scared to go onto a website, you can always drop off your tithes and offerings or you can mail it to the church. Again, that address is 1301 West Ruscombe Street. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19141. Again, that's 1301 West Ruscombe Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19141. Or you can just drop it off, place it in our secure mailbox, uh, and we will retrieve it and we'll deposit it into our account and we'll continue being a blessing to our community and those that are in need. Again, I invite you to be with us every Sunday at 930 on Facebook. For those that are on Zoom, thank you for being with us. We start at 9 o'clock. I pray that the Lord will continue to bless you. Let us have our benediction. God, we thank you for what you have allowed us to experience on today. We pray that somebody's life has been changed and touched. Now, Lord, we pray that you would just continue to keep us. Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us both now and forevermore. Come on, repeat after me. Greater, Greater. is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Amen, amen, amen. God continue to bless you. Stay cool during this time of the heat wave.